Alright guys, today's gonna be my afterthoughts from taking the JLPT N1. As you may know, I took it on Sunday. So, as promised, here's the follow-up video on my thoughts about it. Following that, I'm gonna be going over how I'm gonna be continuing the rest of my Japanese journey and why I'm doing it that way. So, first things first, JLPT N1. What did I, what did I think about the test? My honest opinion was that it was pretty hard. So, I went into the JLPT N1 with an expectation that it would be hard, but when you get when you actually get in there and you start taking the test, you're like, whoa, I don't know these questions. So yeah, that's what happened to me when I was doing the reading section or the reading and lit sorry. The reading and grammar section in the first part, the one that takes 110 minutes, that one was still relatively difficult for me. Um, and that's because the reading so the beginning portion of it, you have your kanji reading and then you have your grammar. Um, I don't think those ones were as difficult as what follows and what follows that are medium, long and short passage questions. And those were pretty rough because there was a lot of reading you had to do during the test and my reading speed and comprehension was not at the level that it needed to be in order to read those passages, comprehend what was in those passages, and then respond on questions that reflected the passage in a way um, to where I'd be able to get the, get the questions correct. So some of the questions would ask like what does the author intend, what do these certain phrases in the passage mean, um, and stuff like that. The difficult part is selecting the correct answer because sometimes when I was reading the answers I wouldn't know what the answers meant the nuances between each of the answers and so that was the difficult part i definitely need to increase some type of comprehension for that to uh for that ability to be there um and or i was missing some type of grammar in order to have understood uh what was happening so that's a majority of why i think the first part went a little rough um, because there was just a lot that you had to read and yeah, I, I'm definitely I understand that I'm not at the level that I need to be at but it was harder than I thought <laughs> So next part is the listening section of the exam So the listening section of the exam is about fi it's 55 minutes and um, unfortunately during my exam there was some hiccups with the audio, so the speakers would actually cut out during the audio and start playing on the main PC speakers. So I believe there was some type of uh, muxing error. And what's funny is they actually brought in a, a CD tape recorder player, like one of those super old ones. And all of us were kind of looking at it, um, kind of like, you know, how Tanjiro looks at Zenitsu, like the face. We'd rather deal with the cutting out speakers than that old crappy tape cassette recorder whatever machine but it wasn't the worst because they would replay the audio but it kind of you know threw you out of the uh immersion of the test so to speak but regardless i thought the listening section um man i the listening section was pretty rough for me i didn't understand um i would say about half of it and that was interesting because uh, I, I ended up guessing on a lot of those questions um, because the dialogues themselves I don't think were hard. I think I was just missing a lot of the vocab and just the nuances of how they were speaking in the questions um, because I personally did not do a lot of listening before the exam. And by listening what I mean is active listening uh, where I am paying attention to the to the content and trying to develop the vocab or try to listen for vocab and pick out vocab. So I did not do any of that before the exam. As you know, I just did a crap ton of reading. Um, and that's subjective as well too, because I don't think I did too much reading. I honestly could have done more, but definitely it did not contribute to my listening ability um, in any significant factor. And so that's a majority of my opinion on the reading section and then the listening section. I think the reading section could definitely be shored up by beginning to read a lot more. Uh, maybe not always just light novels. I could totally see reading some news articles, um, other types of content online being very helpful as well. But, um, you know, I 
we'll be continuing on reading type of uh, that type of content in the future. And then for the listening section, I would really want to grind uh, YouTube and begin to tune my ears to hear Japanese a little bit better so that I could pass that section. Other than that, uh, just a couple of things during the test, you know, it was a standard old standard test where you go in, they read the instructions and then they give you everything and you take the exam. There's a break between same thing for the listening section and then you're done. So if you've taken a standardized test, it's pretty much basically the same. Now, all I have to do is wait for results. I read somewhere that the results are going to be released in March, but my Discord chat said January. So let's hope for January. We'll cross the fingers for that. And the next follow up video on the results will be during that time. Now, what I want to talk about is how I am going to be moving forward into the new year for learning Japanese. And if you've been following this channel, I've actually touched up on this point several times and I'm still doubling down on what I said previously. Um, the way I'm going to continue learning Japanese is by reading content that is interesting to me and consuming content that is interesting to me. And so the reason for that is I am not studying or I am not learning Japanese to pass an exam. So I'm not learning Japanese to pass N1 or any of the JLPTs because the main factor for me me personally learning Japanese is to consume the content and to understand the content. So I don't need a test in order to do that. Now it would be a little bit different if I had to take a test in order to qualify for a job or school. I might be pursuing the N1 or N2 with a little bit more with more of a sense of urgency than I am now. But I personally don't need it at the current moment. So the main important thing for me is consuming content that is interesting. So continuing to read light novels, um, continuing to read manga, and then con and then and then picking up some YouTube or continuing to consume YouTube content to be able to listen a little bit better. So all of the same stuff I've been saying in the past, but there are a little bit of differences. So as you may know, I also use Anki. So Anki is a special repetition flashcard system that allows you to to review vocab. So my Anki has been suffering over the past year, I'd say, because, you know, I haven't really paid attention too much to Anki. And despite what I've been saying about Anki, I am creating a minimum goal per day for Anki to review. And that new goal is around 20 to 25 new words per day. And so I know I personally don't like to do Anki a lot, but I've been doing 20 cards, 20, 20 to 25 cards. And I think that is a manageable number. It takes me about 30 to 45 minutes to do. And if I can use Anki to increase my vocabulary on a consistent basis, I do want to pursue using Anki. In my personal experience, Anki has been very useful for, for these type of things, acquiring new vocabulary, um, reviewing vocabulary, and just solidifying vocabulary, and I've just found that very useful. I won't be doing any type of pre-made deck. I will be doing Anki strictly from sentence mining, so that is one thing that I am going to continue on doing forward. I don't think I might... I don't think right now that it's going to be useful for me to to grind out Anki for a pre-made deck because I think mining is going to be a lot more, uh, a lot better. So that's one big change for uh, moving forward. Originally, I said I was just going to read a lot. However, I do see some merits in uh, picking up Anki and making sure that Anki is still there. Additionally, I do want to get into speaking, so uh, speaking more, so italki i'll be doing a lot of italki or thinking about doing a lot of italki and we'll be practicing my conversational abilities and stuff along the lines of that you know i still want to increase my comprehension to a much higher level before i start speaking too much however i do think for me being able to speak is a motivating factor and to continue on, on in the language, motivating factors, uh, I want to seek as many motivating factors as I can so that I don't get bored and start doing other things. So that's number one for me. And for me, it's always been whatever motivates me is going to keep me in the language. And that's the most important thing for me. 
do what motivates you to continue on in the language. With that, that's going to be the end of today's video. I will make a follow up video for how I'm going to be pursuing Anki because there's a there's a change in how I've done my Anki uh, from the last time that I've talked about Anki. So we'll be making a feature video for that. And that's going to be the end of today's video. I'm changing it up. I'm now saying good luck in your journey out there instead of good luck in your studies because I think it fits the channel a little bit more. So as always, good luck in your journey out there and I'll see you again in a future video.